So um, this is wholeness being this. This is no thing appearing as this. This is the absolute being relative. This is the fullness in form. There isn't anything apart. There's nothing apart. There's just wholeness, oneness, energy. All there is is energy. This is energy. And it's for energy taking this form. And energy takes every form. Energy is all there is. Energy can be anything and nothing. At the moment, let's say energy is taking the form of bodies on seats in a room. That's what's happening. And it can be anything else. Energy is completely free. It is the everything that comes out of nothing. And because it's completely free, and wild and crazy, and apparently ordered as well, then it can also be constrained. Because it's unlimited and free, obviously it can be constrained and limited. And in the human physiology, that constraint, that limitation, arises as a feeling of separation. It's not a thought, it's not a belief, an idea. It's an energetic sense of being separate. And what arises out of that is a sense of having an identity. I am a person. I am real. I exist as a person, an individual, a self, a me. And what arises with that sense of self and me is a very real feeling that this me lives in time, in a story. It exists in a story. I was born, I will live and I will die. I'm living in a journey, moving along. And I have free will and choice to make that journey better or worse. I can do that. And so uh, the whole energy that goes into the story of me, the story of the self, in that reality of being separate, is the whole energy is to make, the, make that story better. And a lot of the energy that's put into that as the child goes into, goes to school, comes to university, maybe, the whole energy is to know more, is to understand about life more. But one of the other um, aspects of being, living in that separate reality, in that, in that reality in which I am a person and everything else is something else out there, this feeling of being separate, there, comes, there also comes with that a feeling of dissatisfaction. There's a, it's not necessarily recognised unless there's a lot of sensitivity around. It's not recognised that you are separate from the tree or the wall or the sky or another person. But basically, because you live in that constrained sense of an identity here, of a, a reality in which me lives, then the me feels separate from everything. So, I am something here, and everything out there that's happening is something else happening to me. But it's separate. And the dissatisfaction with that is the, is the sense that the sky, or, or another person, or a tree, or whatever arises, isn't seen as it really is. It's seen as a separate object. So me lives in a subject-object reality. It's artificial. It's actually a fantasy. But it feels very real to me. And that's the dilemma for me. Because me lives in a world that it thinks is real. It thinks I am real, and the tree is real, and the sky is real. It's only real. And it's out there. It's an object. So that dissatisfaction drives quite a lot of people to look for something deeper.
because they feel there's something missing. There's something that isn't fulfilling about this separate existence. And so they look for the answer to that unfulfillment in religion or in therapy or in a search for enlightenment because people read about something called enlightenment and it feels like that could be the answer. So the me is looking for an answer and, to, and, and then, then searches for another object. The me feels dissatisfied and what it looks for is fulfillment for itself. So it's looking for something else other than money and wealth and, and all those other things. It looks for something called my fulfillment. Because it's been brought up to learn how to deal with the world, then it then thinks that in order to find fulfillment, I have to learn how to find it. So it goes to learns how to become a Christian, or it goes to a psychotherapist to learn how to become a more balanced human being, whatever that is. And then it goes to a, an enlightened master to find out how to become enlightened and fulfilled for itself. It goes to a master or a teacher who also lives in that fantasy world because the master or the teacher feels that they have found an answer, they found, found an answer, and they can help other people find that answer. There's nothing right or wrong about that. There's nothing right or wrong about anything. There's only what seems to happen. So what seems to happen to the seeker <coughs> is that he gets a list, or she gets a list of things to do. Christian, uh, a list of Christian ethics a list from a therapist, and a list from an enlightened master, meditation, fourth shark to be a self-inquiry, find the answer, find out how to be aware, live in deep awareness, come and accept deep awareness. Even these days there are people out there communicating the idea that all you have to do is let go and accept that there's only one. <laughs> so what we're, what we're talking about here is another possibility. What we're sharing together in words and beyond words is the possibility that the whole structure of me, of the individual in the dream of me, in the story of me, is actually illusory. It's an illusion that has come to feel very real for me. But in some way or other, um, it's, it has a structure to it and a set of ideas about who I am and what life is like. And what we're doing here is deconstructing. <coughs> we're deconstructing that idea, that possibility, that that seeming reality that there really is a me and the me can to make its life better. And we're also deconstructing together the idea that there is a path, that there is a journey, that there is something that the, that the me can do to move from A to B, for, to, that can move from the subject to find the object called self or firm. So we can talk together, ask any question, just don't mind it, but just any question illuminates something. There's no answer to the question, by the way. <laughs> If, if, as far as the seeker or the individual is concerned, this meeting is completely and utterly futile and meaningless. <laughs> because there is no recognition here that there is such a thing as a seeker. Already what's happened here is the whole fallacy of, or the whole, yeah, the fallacy of there being a seeker has been exposed. So as far as this is concerned, there's no one here and there's no one out there. So there's no possibility that this would even attempt to help that, because there isn't anybody out there to help. All, we're, all that's happening here is, that, is the exposure of a myth. That's what we're doing, we're exposing a myth. And that can be verbally quite powerful, but the most liberating thing that can happen here is be absolutely beyond words. It's about energy, as I said at the beginning, 
separation is an energy that's held in the body and it's a sort of constrained, afraid, tense, tense sort of energy. And what can happen is that that energy can melt back into the whole boundless, mad, free, unbridled business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs>